Well, what's up, man? It's your boy Crown Gang Keys, King Keys. It's all the same thing, man. Crown Gang Network. But you tuned in right now, take over TV, man. Man, we got royalty in the building. Kings. King Keezy. You know what we here, man. What's the deal, man? Cool, man. Cool. How you? Hey, man. Always working. Straight up. You know how it's it is, bro. You know, always a grind. You know the grind. Exactly. I'm getting it. The tables have turned today on me. You feel me? <laughs> hey, man. It'd be a trip how that happened. When it the interviewer gets interviewed. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes as an interview, you'll get. You know, a chance to get your shit off, cause you the all you always the person get you know doing the interview. For real. And every now they like, man, I got some shit to say, but a lot of times people don't want to interview the interviewer. That's right. Not today. I always wondered that. Um, I don't think I ever seen like Vlad get interviewed, bro. I have. You have? Um, he was on No Jumper. No Jumper did an oh, interview word, with him about yeah about three four months ago. Word. Yeah, and I think he did something else. He did the Breakfast Club a while back, mm. but he did one on No Jumper pretty recently. It was pretty good, man. You might want, might want to go check that out. I'm surprised ain't nobody ran up in there on him or nothing. I'm saying. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised ain't nobody ran up in there on him. You know, people would kick both their ass. Probably not okay. too much Adam 22. Hey, no, I heard he got on. Oh, somebody ran up on yeah. him. Matter of fact, matter of fact, you wouldn't believe who sunk the, who sunk the hit, sunk the hit or whatever. You know what I mean? Russ. What? The, yeah, the little bitty short dude with the wavy haircut. Yeah. I thought he was gonna tell somebody Gucci or somebody like that. Nah. Russ? Not Russ. They say Russ something. He say he's son on. Um, oh, I don't know. You know, you know how it is. You watch it on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Something like two or three guys in there. Uh, 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 I think Adam said he was getting like a what it is when your feet, your uh, manicure, pedicure, what that mm -hmm. is. Pedicure. He was getting a pedicure, cuz and, and and the people came in and punched him down or whatever. Damn. Yeah. Me, I don't be worrying about no shit like that, though. Me neither. I don't worry about no shit like that. Right. I don't. It's different. Like, it's different. Well, me, I got a secure building, so I don't be worried about it, but. I got an AR. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> I got an AR, cuz I ain't worried about it. your ass if you yeah, want to. Yeah, come on. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, man, what's the latest with you? Um. Putting out music, bro. Putting out music. Uh, more interviews, of course. Yeah. See, um, you know, it hasn't been told, like I say, my first time being interviewed or whatever, but, you know, I started my record label in February. Okay. I started my record label in February, Crown Gang Network Incorporated. Right. And, uh, I got a couple artists, you know, under the team or whatever, but uh, I started interviewing on the side, you know, to kind of bring light back to the city. It just, you know, like we were saying earlier, the city don't really have internet presence it doesn't Treeport doesn't have an internet presence like it's hard to find rappers here like if i want to get online and find a baton rouge artist it's gonna be so easy it's right. so easy i could type in one artist and it's gonna youtube finna suggest the link and take me to every other br artist it is Treeport not like that and i feel like it's been a gap in our musical output in the past like decade you feel me yeah so i started the interviews to kind of you know, just add into it. You feel me? Man, your interviews are dope, man. I appreciate that. I, I don't even know how I ran up on it. I think it came up in my suggestions. You know, when you watch a YouTube. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Tags, man. Oh, yeah. That's for artists out there. Interview, videographer, whoever you will, man. Uh, uh, know how to tag your stuff properly on YouTube and, and any other sources. Tag it properly and somebody see it. So... It was the title. I forgot what the title was, but I think it had like top five Shreveport yeah. rappers. I said, okay, let me let me see what, what they're gonna say. <laughs> word up, word up. And yeah. then it went to the next day. And I was like, is there some more? And then it was some more, so I just kept watching them. See, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Oh man. Yeah. It's like Content. I've watched interviews before and I've kind of like turned them off and then been like, okay, they ain't really talk about it. But your interviews, man. Your interviews be <laughs> captivating. It's like, yeah. you can't turn it off because you're afraid you're going to miss something. Straight up. And Straight everybody up. has a story and they be telling these stories because I'm not from Shreveport. I'm from mm -hmm. East Texas. 
Right, right, right. So I don't know a lot of Shreveport musical history. Mm -hmm. So as I'm watching these interviews, I'm learning a lot, you know. Yeah, uh, Shreveport has a real, how should I say, uh, a real rich culture, bro. And it, it yeah. really hasn't been exposed, you know what I mean? Like, I, I ain't really seen nobody just exposing it, you feel me? So, you know, that's, that's what it is, bro. So you know the guys mean? that you've interviewed, I've heard the songs, but I didn't know necessarily who sung them. Exactly. So now exactly. I'm putting two to two together. I'm like, okay, so that's who sings this. And man, like that Romeo interview. <laughs> I knew you was gonna go there, bro. That's that, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of people's favorite interview. You feel me? Rome ain't hold back. He didn't but he didn't care. It's like he just he just let it all out. He let his truth be told. I was happy. I was happy he did that. I mean, of course, because you know, you know, we interviews at the end right. of the day, you know, you want great content, you feel me? Right. But it needed to be said. It had to be said. It had to be said from somebody at, at one point in time. And coming from Romeo specifically, somebody who's kind of been, you know, I I, I, I hate to try to, I, I'm don't Romeo, don't think I'm downplaying your, you know, your artistry or, or, or nothing like that, your, your musical career, but he's been a fly on the wall in a lot of different places mm -hmm. musically, amongst a lot of different uh musical organizations. You you feel me? Labels, if you will. Right. You feel me? So um he had a lot to say. He saw a lot. He ain't mind saying it neither. He ain't care how nobody felt. He sure the hell did it. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. He, he yeah. did not care. And right. you can tell he meant what the hell he said, too. It That's wasn't right. no second guessing or That's maybe right. I should say this, I shouldn't say it. Oh, hell no. Nah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it like this, as I said earlier, there's been a gap in our musical output in the past decade. Yeah. That's kind of known, you know what I mean? I mean, you got your your people who, you know, your, your consistent people, you know what I'm saying? Your mm -hmm. big poppers and such, you feel me? But it really hasn't been like a, for example, look at Baton Rouge, New Orleans. They're consistently putting out new artists. They're consistently um, breeding industry artists. You feel me? Like industry level artists. I just, Shreveport ain't seen it. Shreveport ain't seen that, you know what I mean? And uh, it's been rumors. You feel me on why that's been going on and and it, it just had to be addressed you know what i'm saying how romeo put it out is the dj's fault or whatever you know what i'm saying <clears throat> and i you know i could agree and disagree with that you feel me because i look at it like a dj's i mean a dj have multiple jobs you know what i'm saying but their job is to break an artist right right you know what i'm saying so i could kind of see what he's saying but at the same time you know every artist has to be about their business Right. You got to be about your business and, and that kind of contribute to us lacking that internet presence. People not knowing how to correctly copyright their music. People not knowing. Uh, I ain't going to even say not knowing. I'm going to say being cheap. I'm going to chunk it up to the city being cheap. Quality. The quality speaks for itself, man. That's the first thing. Like somebody going to listen at you for three seconds. And if the quality just don't resonate with them, they're going to cut it off. They're going to skip to the next song. Exactly. Uh, find a new artist. You know what I'm saying? People are oh, attention span so short nowadays, so it seems like you really only have their first impression. And that's it. Man, out of all these great interviews you've done, was there anything you heard that you didn't know or that surprised you? Oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, I can say down there, every interview, I learned something new. Every interview, I learned something new. Um, and I kind of two-way the game, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm interviewing, but at the same time, I'm soaking up game, too. Right. As you know, for my own artistry or, or whatever. But I learned about the history, too. I look at it like the only way you're going to know where you're going is if you know where you came from. So I wanted to learn my history, too. I wanted to see the do's and the don'ts, you know, who you can mess with and who you can't. You, you feel me? So who you can network with and who you can't, man. So, uh, yeah, I learned something new every time. Every time. You said my favorite one. You said the one where I learned the most at? Yeah, so what, so which one did you learn the most at? Like, damn, I didn't know none of this stuff. It's between Romeo and Aru, because, you know, we broke that up into four parts. Yeah. And uh, I got the first three out right now. But between his, ooh, now that I think about it, it's really between his and Banks and, uh, and Lil Pope. Cause Pope came in there and dropped some gems too, though. Yeah, he did. He came in there and dropped some gems, and he ain't mind, you know, him and Romeo, uh, cousin. 
Okay. They blood cousins, so um, that a lot of the tell. Yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of the, uh, the same stories, just from different perspectives. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, but hands down, you got to really get up to Romeo, though. You know what I'm saying? He came in, he he really told the whole story from at least 2000. Right. You know, he he really sparked the Aunt Banks interview for me because he said some controversial things about Banks and uh and Street Fame and uh and LD the Hustle Fame. He said some controversial things about them. Oh, you familiar with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. Well, well, he said some controversial things just about uh just about uh Aunt Banks his 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 come up. You know what I mean? Right. So uh. Banks, you know, addressed it or whatever, but but Banks didn't deny it. You know what I mean? He he didn't deny it at all. You know, he just gave his own perspective of the whole situation. Right. Yeah. So, I I, I think Romeo interview I learned the most. So, what made you pick the people that you've interviewed so far? Just just from knowing them, or just oh. like trying to just connect the pieces together? Oh, connecting pieces. It's a lot of pieces that need to be connected, but uh, definitely, you know, just kind of going with the flow. Just kind of going with the flow. I can tell you this. <clears throat> I've been watching you for a minute. Okay. I've been watching you for a minute. Or uh, I had just picked up on. Um, I mean, I'm a real meticulous guy. Right. So I wanted to see what was gonna make mine stand out a little different. Right. Now you went. Oh, what's the other guy name? Um, the realness mag or oh, one hundred. Oh, you about the the real one hundred. The real one hundred. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, cause been doing this thing too and um. And I had did a little research on them or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I did a little research on y'all too. And I just saw that me and his platform similar. The difference between our platform is you have a, a wider variety of artists that you will, you know, bring on the show or, right. you know what I'm saying? Me personally, I just wanted to do the city. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, the culture though, it's, 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 it's rich, like I said, uh, you know, I ain't got like no vendetta against Baton Rouge and New Orleans or nothing like that, but I always compare us to them because Shreveport and BR was like this at one point in time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now it's a different story, but you know, at one point in time, we was like neck and neck as far as amount of artists we got out, you know, uh, 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 um, the level of artists, you know, the caliber. You, you, you feel me? Right. So at one point in time, we was kind of neck and neck, and now it just seemed like Every week they putting out a new industry level artist. You feel me? When I say industry level, I mean somebody who them rules up there. You know what I'm saying? The, the, uh, they, they they making you know uh, uh, residuals off their music. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know somebody who uh, uh, touring probably. You, you dig what I'm saying? So that's what I mean when I say that. But um, every other week they putting that out, and you know we not doing that. And it's 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 avenues in the game we was missing, like the interviews. You know what I'm saying? Especially from that, that inside out perspective. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, you from East Texas, you know what I'm saying? I'm from right here in the city. And I feel like it shouldn't it shouldn't have to take nobody coming from outside to come in. And it should be somebody here doing that as well. You see what I'm saying? Somebody from here who know the people, you know what I'm saying? Or could, or could connect with the people quicker. Exactly. That could go ahead and get us out there because ain't nothing wrong with, like, for example, um, <clears throat> I just did a little poke in the room. Right. I seen the dude, uh, the realness, uh, the real 100, him. I seen him interview Lil Polk. And I'm like, well, that's perfect. Because if Polk got music out, he finna, his internet presence, you know what I'm saying? His digital footprint is up there. And that's what's going to start happening. Right. People are going to see people on your platform, like, damn, they gave a good interview. Let me get them. And it's just only going to help them. Exactly. See, I'm in one of them unique situations where I'm from Longview. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Shreveport. Right. So... I couldn't focus just on Shreveport when I'm from Longview. Word, word. But then they gonna fuck around and kill me. Like, oh, you from here? What? You know what happened? Straight up, straight up. So then when I was starting to view people in Longview, then people from Texas County, Marshall. So now I, I I pretty much try to cover the whole arc of the text. Low key, you got to though when you from that area though. If you think right. about it like that, because right. Longview itself isn't big it's enough. Not to, big enough to contain right. a whole platform right that's right that's so right i have and then to you to gotta go. think about smaller cities like texas or canada too who ain't far away right right and marshall and that's right carthage and you know Nacado all these areas right here mm -hmm. but the good thing about you you from shreveport you know who done what you know who to hit that's right you know who got what story so you need that in town presence like a um 
real life street stars or mm-hmm. you know dallas global or those Straight guys up. in dallas they cover mostly dallas i mean they mm-hmm. travel but their home base is dallas that's right that's so right. i need, like that about them too because they giving their city that outlet right so we need you know, these outlets like mine and yours to help bring mm-hmm. up the internet presence in shreveport that's the reason that's probably a little bit of the reason nobody's got on yet because you can't find nobody you can't find nobody like uh like Tyrese was saying a couple years back about the, uh, ain't nobody gonna find you in street play. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. And then it's like the money not here, it depends on what you're doing, but the money really just not here on a, on a wide scale like it is in a bigger city or uh, metropolitan area like, you yeah. know, LA or Dallas or, you know, Houston or some shit like that. You feel me? Yeah. So you really gotta be hustling here. You really gotta be making yourself seen. You feel me? Because the big stars don't really stop through here. Nah, they don't. They don't have a reason to stop you because you got Baton Rouge and New Orleans. They self-contained down there. They don't, right. they don't have no reason to travel north. Mm-hmm. You got Dallas and Houston and all that. They don't have no reason to travel east. That's right. So we got to self-contain and give them a reason to come up here. Yeah. They just going to keep driving past and, you know, from Baton Rouge and drive past Shreveport and head to Dallas. Yeah, I feel Dallas, like drive past the head to Baton Rouge. That's right. I feel like if you endeavoring to be in that, you know, uh, uh, you know, the music industry, starting to hear from the city, like you got to commute. It's work. You got to commute. You got to go where, you know, it's available. You feel me? Yeah. But that's like, like I say, that's the exact reason why I started doing the interviews, because I felt like we shouldn't have to. We should have certain outlets here that we could take advantage of. Right. They, Real talk. Our artists shouldn't have to travel to Dallas and all these just to get interviewed. Exactly. Know, good right here. And then they're they going to look at you in Dallas like, like, damn, you coming in. You and I book it now. You know what I'm saying? You and I in our backyard, if you will. You feel me? Like, yeah. why you ain't at home doing that? Right. Then what you going to say? Shit, ain't nobody at home to interview me. Ain't nobody at home for the, you know, do these things that I need as an artist. Hey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, man, how much, I ain't going to say how much trouble's been, but like, how is that an inbox and the social media been since you started these interviews? I know you crazy get DMs and emails and crazy. please on why I should get interviewed. And I've been getting awful money. Yeah, I've been getting awful money, but I ain't want to take the money. It ain't some things. Every dollar ain't you know good. Like I ain't want to take it. I ain't want to. Uh, well, how can I say it? Uh, saturate my platform. That's yeah. That's I ain't want to saturate right. my platform with. You know, I, I want. I wanted me to. You researched me before I came with you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I research people before they come. So it's like, I wanted to generally want to interview you. I, you want an organic interview. Exactly. I don't want nobody up here who don't nobody know. I know. And you struggling so, uh, so what you've been, you know, you know those exactly. type of interviews where you just trying to reach and find stuff and exactly. man, that shit sucks. I started off on, um, I started off interview my boy JD. I had to shout y'all. Um, my boy JD Trunk Killers, right? I wrote his questions because I, I was like, man, let me write these questions down for for Cuz getting here, cause you know I smoke, you know he smoke. I don't want to <laughs> get up there. JD <laughs> look like uh uh yeah. Um, after him, I had reached out to uh Lil One, you know Lyco Productions. Yeah. Yeah, I reached out to him. I wrote his question, and around at, right after that, I was like, man, I gotta start writing these questions because it just. It's too. You start sounding robotic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so you know what I'm saying. Exactly. It, it throws you off. You exactly. can't generate you no know, organic conversation because you're trying to stick to the script. That's real. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what it was. You know, uh, I ain't want to do it like that. As a matter of fact, little one, I'm gonna tell the story. Don't be mad at me. I <laughs> little one interview. We shot it in two days, man. Um, uh, I don't know. I think he was a little sick. He was drinking or something. He he uh. He kind of threw up halfway through the first interview or whatever. Oh, damn. But I know this tension. Like, I don't know what it is, bro. But I, it's like, my bad. I, I know this tension, like, um, when I ask who the top five is, it always, like, like niggas be breaking out pen and paper trying to remember who they could. And it shouldn't be like why, that. Why, why is that such a... It shouldn't be a like that. It is such a heartbreaking, just... Cause they fit just like what you just asked me about how my DM look, you know, cause you know, sometimes nigga be mad that you in the DM, nigga be throwing y'all different kind of, yeah. you know, hate mail and shit like that. Nigga didn't want to get them emails and DMs and shit like Man, that from they followers. It ain't gonna matter. Right. It ain't, there's no such thing as a perfect top five. 
Because mm-hmm. what you what you asking is who is your top five? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Now, if, if me and you gave a top five, they're both not going to be the same. That's right. But there's certain people think that and you certain could, people it, have to be there. I'm like, it's my top five. It's just like the Cowboys and the Saints. You could debate about which is the better team. And, you know, <clears throat> I use them because you know what we at. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Two, two favorite teams of the city. But anyway, you could debate my top five and your top five. We could debate it. That ain't no, you know, that ain't no bad thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just a conversation between men. But facts is facts. Right. Facts is facts. If y'all don't like the facts, we got to do better in the city because, I mean, the top five to me really is like staple. Like, it ain't finna go nowhere. It ain't finna go nowhere. It ain't finna change for another couple years. It's like our output not big enough for it to just change. Our musical output just ain't, ain't great enough. People's catalogs not long enough. You finna keep talking about the same, you know what I'm saying? Like the same older music. Right. Come on now. It just ain't gonna happen like that. And this new music, microwave. Yeah. This new music like has no substance. None. It's not gonna be a KP put your hands on me that you can still play today yeah. and then still rock the club. I was listening at the song the other day. KP a beast. He he a beast, like for real, for real. I talk KP all the time. Straight up? Yeah. Man, I got I got an interview cuz. I got some questions I gotta ask cuz. But he ready. He like <sighs> He like in my honorable mentions though. He in my honorable mentions. Well, since we on the subject, my top five. Who you got? It ain't finna take me long. <clears throat> First and foremost, who you got? This for everybody. So are we? Are you? Are we doing all time? All oh, time. Okay, yeah, of course. Okay, that, okay, of course. Fine. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I ain't finna put no new rappers in it because it's like, nigga, y'all catalog not long enough. You know what I'm saying? It's finna be a staple. First and foremost, this has to be addressed. Just like, just like if we were talking about the top five greatest uh, basketball players of all time. Right. You know somebody gonna say something at first, like you either gonna say Michael Jordan or you gonna say Will. Like you can't say both. You feel me? Some shit like that. But you can't put man to go in the top five, bro. He has his own category. I don't put P, I don't put Master P in the top five, but I feel like, you know, his business, you know, the, the, the business aspect of the game played a whole uh, a lot in it. So he got his own category, you feel me? Okay. But Mandigo got his own category, so don't don't be mad because you don't hear me say Mr. Mandigo, but you got it. It, it, it. It's crazy to me, too. It's crazy to me, too, y'all, but I got to put Hurricane in there. You, you, like, you can't not put Chris in there. With the number. I don't care if you wrote the, the music or not. I don't care if he wrote it or not, cause he a full artist. He just he just a, a artist. You feel me? He just an artist, bro. And that's what we talking about. We talking about artists. The, you you can't fake on the numbers. You can't. You can't fake on the appearances. You can't. You, you can't. I mean, it's made on one six and part countdown. The in the dicky suit, dog. <laughs> in the dicky suit, man. Yeah. So uh, Chris go up there. Why Yellow go up there? Cause he is like I look at him like like. Street Porch rap bad guy, cuz, cuz, and beefed with everybody. Like, for I don't know what reason, but I didn't just heard him diss, you know what I'm saying? Right. And be cold, like, so he gotta go up there lyrically and all this shit. But, uh, them two, um, you can't not put Papa up there. He held the city down. He was like holding the city down with what nobody else just dropping. You know what I'm saying? So I got to put Pop up there. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, Ratchet Life. You know, I said it before. I'm going to say it again. Like, you got to put him in there because he was like the Shreveport, you know, savior on some shit. You feel me? I feel like he's going to be the rebirth. I, uh, personally, I don't feel like his catalog is long enough, but then I'm kind of contradicting myself. Uh-huh. I don't feel like his catalog is long enough, but I feel like the 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 uh how he resonated with the people you can't you can't deny it you can't deny it bro you can't deny it you just can't deny it. if it's a popularity contest cuz one you feel me bam no, he, was, he was good i mean like you know what i'm saying you know rp god bless the dead but shit his um you know past and should not have been you know untimely cuz still be rocking shit out you feel me so that's number four and uh uh number five is a toss-up man 
I say my damn self, but my catalog ain't long enough. Um, mm, bro, I give you a top four, bro. Um, Should we leave it at four? I'll leave it at four, bro. Cause this, <laughs> we, we leave it at four. That's how stingy I am with the spot. Like, I don't really just want to, I don't just give it to nobody who just low-key don't deserve it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I don't even understand half the music these boy be talking about nowadays. I, I just don't. Game ain't the same no more, man. Nah, it ain't, bro. People it just trying to get a bag. For real, the music turned to a hustle game, man. You know I'm an engineer too, right? Yeah, I, I've, I've seen a little bit of that. Watch this, bro. I done had two different, two different guys, two separate days, come in with the same beat <laughs> and make damn near the same song. That just make you not love the game no more. And I don't make that kind of, you know, this tape, I, I, I just, you know, I'm doing the tape, I'm finna drop it uh, on Halloween called Voodoo Baby. Okay. I just grabbed a whole bunch of NBA Youngboy type beats and did my thing on it. You feel me? It's like, you know, lyrics and shit. You feel me? That's what, you know, that's, that's what we uphold at Crown Gang Network is lyrics and shit like that. You feel me? But I just did that just to show you, like, show the people like I could do that. You know what I'm saying? But and I talked about what I wanted to talk about on them, but. I don't understand half the music coming out nowadays, bro. I just don't. I just can't get with it. Yeah. You see how long songs is nowadays, bro? Like two minutes and 30 Shoot, seconds? two minutes, 20 seconds, two minutes, 30 seconds? Yeah. Sometimes had, not even two minutes. Though. I had somebody tell me, bro, bro what you, why you writing the third verse? I'm like, cuz, like, what era did y'all come up in? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, of course you want to make something that's going to, you know, be marketable, you know? Right. Of course, you know what I'm saying? But it got to be some passion in this shit somewhere. You got to want to do this shit. I don't know. It's all like force nowadays. All facts. Man, let me ask you this before I forget. How'd you even find TakeOver TV? How'd I find y'all? Um, I just love the city, bro. I love the yeah. city. And I, I don't know. What interview did I see from TakeOver first? There ain't no damn telling. It's really not, but honestly though, yo, I think it was like the Meg. I thank you, you cause you did it a while back. And yeah, I, think I did the Meg podcast and posted it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh shoot, I did a big pop interview. I seen that too. I seen that too. Like I sit and just, you know what I'm saying, just watching, but uh You're a connoisseur like I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all your interviews great, bro, but especially the, the the people from the city, like when I catch you, you know what I'm saying, doing them, it's like I you know, I, I, I resonate with that because I'm from here. You feel me? Right. But um, I caught the Meg first, I think, bro. That's how I got hip to take over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, man, when I first started, man, it was just, it wasn't really, it wasn't no media presence. That's what I'm saying. There, and I told, it was like what I'm saying. life support. And I was doing the podcast. Then I was like, man, it's time to start. I got to switch over to video. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool to listen. But, you know, we the generation people want to see. Exactly. And that's why I be telling these artists that want interviews, they ain't got no videos and nothing. I'm like, dog, people need to see. Exactly. Once they watch the interview, they finna be going YouTube trying to look your stuff up. And if you ain't got shit, then, you know, when you, get the, when you do these interviews, before you even request an interview, you need to develop a, some kind of fan base. Exactly. Because who in the hell is going to watch this interview? Hey, you, you ever lost subscribers because you post an interview that was kind of like bogus? Mm hmm Word up, and I, I didn't seen it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't seen it. So it's like, nah, nigga, I ain't finna reach my platform for you and don't nobody know you. See me? Okay, boom. I started my company like a one-stop shop. You can come record over here. We mix over here. We master over here. We do videos over here. I do interviews over here. So it's like everything yeah. right here. You feel me? So I, I did that for the city. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that, and that, and that uh, means like that because... When I first started, you know what I'm saying, I, want, I got everything, all the equipment and shit I have, all the assets and stuff that I've, you know, uh, 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 gained over the years or whatever. I really, I, I set out to get it just for me because I'm an artist too, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what I wanted to do. So, but then I thought to myself, I was like, damn, I could make a company and I could, I could be somebody like in the city. Like I could, you know, help the city be what it needs to be, return to its, you know, former greatness. You feel right. me? But yeah, man, I mean, People get mad at me because I be picky on who I want to interview. I had some dude um, DM me like, man, you got your picks and chooses. Yeah, it's my platform. Exactly. If you own a company, you have your picks and chooses too. Exactly. 
Exactly. I'm I mean, like, bro, what are you talking about? And he, he can't really be mad at you, bro, because, uh, like I say, shit, you can lose followers. You can lose subscribers. Fuck around with somebody who don't nobody know. Lose followers. Lose subscribers. Lose your... uh. Because if you just let anybody walk on your platform, it ain't going to be special no more. Exactly. It ain't going to be shit for nobody to be on your platform. Exactly. You want people to have that feeling like, shit, man, I don't did something. I don't finally got on, you know, Crown Games TV. Exactly. Or I got on TakeOver TV. You got to feel like an accomplishment. It can't, it just, yeah. can't be saturated. Like, like when people make it to Vlad. Real talk. You made it to the top. Real talk. Yeah. I mean, shoot. So I want to... Being that, and if, and if it takes people getting pissed at me, I mean, so fuck it. It just is what it is. Yeah. Exactly. 